All right, so before we talked about how electrical surgical generators operate at really high frequencies, around 500 kilohertz. Let's look at some of the effects of high frequency in an ESU. All right, so when you're dealing with high frequency AC, you have to think about both induction and capacitive effects. All right, so right here, I have a fluorescent light bulb that's been wrapped around by my ESU cable. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the coag. You can see that that fluorescent light bulb lights up. All right, so what's going on there? Well, just by wrapping this cable up, the insulation here is getting penetrated by that high frequency signal and it's causing current to flow in this gas tube and that's allowing the gas in there to get excited and to light up. I don't have anything connected here or there, but I'm still able to get charges to flow in the fluorescent light. So what do we do about this? Is there any safety concerns with this? Yes, absolutely. That's why we do high frequency leakage tests. So let me show you what those look like on our ESU analyzer. All right, so one of the first things you wanna do is grab your green cable and your alligator clip here, and you're gonna connect this to the variable low in the QA ES3, and then you're gonna connect the alligator clip to the back of your generator at the equipotential point. Here's the equipotential point on the back of your generator. Go ahead and put the alligator clip on there. And so this is now connected to the variable low. Now, when you're doing high frequency leakage, you have to test the return electrode, monopolar mode, bipolar mode, and any other modes you might have on your generator. Different brands have different modes that you might see, and you have to test all of those. Now we're gonna start with the return electrode test. So we're gonna take this cable right here. All this is is your standard return electrode connector. And then you have the two leads there shorted out in there and they connect. We're gonna connect that to the variable high. So that goes to the variable high. That's gonna go into your return electrode port. Next, I'm going to install my foot switch. Okay, so here we can connect the foot switch to the back of the unit. Once you get it situated correctly, you should be set to go. We wanna to go to our high frequency leakage. And what that's gonna do is that, can, that is going to create a 200 ohm resistance in our circuit. So the HF leakage test defaults to 200 ohms. So now what you wanna do is make sure that you have your cut and coag all set to the highest possible that they can go for your particular unit. You wanna make sure your settings are all set up here and you can go ahead and hit start continuous. And then as you press down on the foot pedals, you'll get a reading for the high frequency leakage that was cut. And that's coag. Okay, now that we tested the return electrode, what I can do is test monopolar mode by using a pencil that I can connect to the variable high. And once I make sure that my settings are correct, I can go to start continuous, hit the cut, get a measurement of the cut, and then hit my coag, get a measurement of my coag. Okay, so in general, the leakage current needs to be less than 150 milliamps when the test load is set to 200 ohms. Now, sometimes the manufacturer is gonna specify a different lower limit, and a lot of times that's dependent on the type of mode you're in. A lot of times manufacturers will specify lower leakage limits for things such as bipolar mode and leakage mode. So always make sure to check your manufacturer for their leakage current limits. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is test bipolar mode. So to do that, we're gonna take the red lead and connect it to this port over here. And then we're gonna connect the other end of the lead to the variable high. Make sure you give it a nice push. Make sure that's completely inserted into the bipolar port there. Next, we're gonna hit start continuous. And then we're gonna hit the bipolar foot switch. Now you wanna move that over to the next port. Okay, last but not least, you're gonna to have to connect the foot pedal output to the variable high. 
I'm not going to go ahead and show that step. It's, it's sort of redundant, but you'd obviously go ahead and test that in the max power settings. What I am going to show you is a little trick in case you don't have the foot pedal to activate this. So I have Justin over at Better Biomed to thank for this trick. He showed me this in one of his videos. Um, but if, if you don't have your foot pedal to activate your, your foot switch, what you can do is you can actually jumper, just use any jumper. And depending on the model of ESU, you got to jumper it a little bit differently. But for this one, to jump the bipolar, what you can do is you need to put jump both of these ports here and then put another jumper in here. Now, as soon as you touch this top circuit right here to the bottom clip, you're going to activate the bipolar. And this is low voltage, so you don't have to worry about anything. So as long as there's contact between all three of those ports, you're going to activate the bipolar mode. Now, to activate cut and coag on the monopolar mode, as soon as I touch these two paper clips together, I cut. Then if I want to switch to coag, I can go to the other two ports over here. There we go. So now when I put, let me make sure you can see that. So now when I connect this paper clip to this one up here, we get our coag. Obviously having a pair of paper clips, something to jumper this can be handy in the short term. If you're doing this all the time, I'd recommend creating a little jig or something that you can use to just use a push button to make this a little bit easier. But sometimes finding those foot pedals can be a real challenge. And so this is an option in a pinch. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments if you have any other questions about ESU testing. And make sure to check out some of our other videos.